There's a specter now haunting Europe, a specter of economic stagnation, with growth there disappointing again and confidence falling back. The Eurozone's economy is stuck. More than seven years into the crisis, recovery continues to elude the region. And those economic problems are fueling the rise of anti-Euro parties across the region and putting pressure on the European Central Bank to step in to save the single currency. This has been six years of very high unemployment. And uh, uh, of course, when people are hit, in, uh, you know, they start doubting about the ability of their leadership to take care of them. And uh, so it's not a surprise that uh, parties uh, which are very much anti-establishment and parties which uh, are also very much anti-Europe uh, and uh, are actually coming up in the, in the polls and they're doing very well. Peter Pratt is the European Central Bank's chief economist and a member of its executive board. I asked him what policymakers at the central bank could do to help. Uh, we have uh, very clearly said that from the monetary policy point of view, uh, to fix the credit, the, the, the lending channel, we need to have a degree of monetary accommodation which will imply a sizable increase of the balance sheet. And we have referred to the balance sheet of 2012 to explain what do we mean with sizable. Uh, we also said that if uh, we, these measures will not bring the degree of accommodations that we expect, uh, we will be uh, possibly, if needed, considering additional measures and also, of course, depending on how the economy will evolve. But very clearly we have said that the state of the economy requires a high degree of monetary accommodation. Some investors have questioned whether the ECB can swell its balance sheet by a trillion just by buying asset-backed securities and covered bonds. That scepticism has led to calls for the central bank to begin buying corporate bonds or sovereign debt. We have seen, for example, in covered bonds that the issuance capacity has been increased very much. The supply of uncovered bonds uh, has been uh, very dynamic recently. It's only the beginning of the program. We hope that the same will happen with ABSs. Now, this being said, we uh, reiterate the fact that if the measures we have decided will not deliver, if they don't deliver, we will uh, take additional measures. Meanwhile, officials outside the currency bloc are fearful that the region's troubles will engulf the global economy and have joined the ECB's calls for governments to pull their weight. The monetary policy alone is not going to turn around uh, the challenges uh, in Europe. Um, there is a marginal role for fiscal policy if it is coordinated and consistent, consistent with the rules uh, in the euro area. And fu most fundamentally, there is an immense role for uh, considerable additional structural uh, reforms that will be required uh, to change the trajectory of, uh, of the Eurozone. But leaders of the Eurozone's three largest economies remain locked in a bitter dispute. Francois Hollande and Matteo Renzi are under fire for the slow pace of economic reform, while German Chancellor Angela Merkel is facing calls by her French and Italian counterparts to spend more and relax her tough stance on EU budget rules. The German government is not going to go down the road of deficit spending. Uh, their goal is to balance the budget next year and, as far as possible, keep it that way up to the next election. However, that doesn't rule out uh, actions such as uh, sell-offs of state-owned assets in companies like Deutsche Post or Deutsche Telekom. There is a modest 10 billion euro investment program that was announced uh, the other day by the finance minister Wolfgang Schäuble. However, 10 billion euros is a drop in the ocean. It won't uh, mean very much. What does seem very odd that at a time when interest rates uh, for the German government on, on uh, capital markets are, are really at the historic lows that uh, the government shouldn't consider some borrowing. I do think uh, Germany should uh, rise to its responsibilities as the anchor economy uh, in Europe rather more than it has done. There have also been reports of divisions between policymakers on the Governing Council. Attention has focused on differences in opinion between ECB President Mario Draghi and Bundesbank Chief Jens Weidmann. 
Mr Pratt from the ECB dismissed any concerns these disagreements would stop the central bank taking tough action if needed. Of course all this matters very much, uh, but I think at the end of the day what is very important is that uh, markets, I mean, are convinced, and I think they should be, uh, that uh, we can take decisions in difficult times and, uh, and uh, governing council uh, at the end, uh, you know, can conclude the discussions. Even if Mr Draghi wins the battle with his Bundesbank counterpart and manages to buy sovereign debt, quantitative easing might not solve all the region's problems. But it could help lift weak inflation, which at 0.4% is well below the ECB's target of just under 2%. The institution which is more able to act in a timely way is the European Central Bank. It is true that monetary policy can you know, do it all, but uh, it is also true that that's the only federal institution that we have, and the institution that uh, in principle will be able to act uh, aggressively and in a timely way. They have done quite a bit, but in my view they haven't done enough uh, to, uh, you know, especially to, to deal with the situation of uh, decreasing inflationary expectation which uh, implies that uh, the real uh, interest rates, so the real cost of credit, uh, is actually now very high in, in the euro area. With politicians at odds and the ECB's room for action limited, the Eurozone's troubles have no easy fixes. Claire Jones, Financial Times, London.